Welcome to beautiful Miami. I always love working here. Cool gigs, cool clients, and uh, this is both. So we're at the Fountain Blue Hotel, one of the most famous hotels in South Beach. That is the scene we're working with. I have a feeling a lot of light is going to come through there. But for now, let's just get everything out of the bags and start setting up. So the most valuable thing today is having an assistant. Tristan is here. I've worked with him for years. He's amazing at what he does. He can be A-cam, he can be B-cam. Today, he's B-cam slash assistant. In the far room is our producer who flew in from Canada. And I asked them, how, did, how were they aware of me? And they just did a Google search for Miami C70 DP. So that's directly related uh, to these vlogs. I did a Google search and one of my videos came up. So it's good to know that is another way to spread awareness that you do what you do. Half the battle is just having people know that you are a DP. So um, this softbox is amazing. It's the lantern. It pops open in five seconds, no rods. And then it comes with a skirt to control the spill. And this sunlight is no joke. So you can see the background window with the iPhone because it has software uh, for HDR. But in the C70, um, you see a kind of a blue sky, but mostly a silhouette sitting in the chair. So I put my big light in. I bring in two more lights. It barely makes a difference. I bring in my third light and it barely raises enough level on the face to be usable. We pull the shears closed. And one reason for that is to cut the amount of light coming through the window, but also we need to make two different interview setups out of the same location. And this is an extremely tiny location. So these lights are pushed in pretty much as close as they can do go without being in the frame. And uh, eventually it works. You know, it it, they allotted for an hour and 30 minutes for setup. Here's our B cam, uh, Canon R5 recording externally into a Ninja. And then lastly is just the hair light. So I'm using my LED panel. It's nice because it's bicolor and it has the barn doors which allow me to cut the light. But when we're looking in the frame, Tristan said it was too, too sharp, too harsh, and there's a shadow coming over the ear. So I packed diffusion paper earlier and I pull off some gaff tape and soften it up. So it was the perfect use case for this style of light. I have hard light going straight through that, that five in one diffuser reflector. And then here is just a nice little pop of soft light to go around the subject's head. I usually like to put the client behind me and then I can kind of like perfect consult mm -hmm. with them and not okay. really mess with the eye line. Gotcha. Yes, that does have. <laughs> they always look to you for approval. Like, is that oh, good? Is that <laughs> so setup is going well. When I first start, I just bring the camera in so I can get a visual of what I have to work with through the lens. Once that looks good, then I start bringing in lights and then final is audio. So we're going to boom in an XLR with a 20 foot XLR cable and that plugs straight into the C70. Something I always like to do is wrap it around um, anything that can support the weight of the cable. That way that weight does not go onto the port. So I'm going to plug that mini XLR into my camera, but first I'm going to wrap it around uh, either the tripod handle or the top handle and just remove all of that weight sagging down on the port. It'll save your camera in the long run and it's just a good practice to do, especially if you're using other people's gear. If uh, they see you taking care of their ports, it makes them want to hire you again. And we are rolling. 
So the client comes in, everything looks great. We move the tripod aside, let him walk in, sit down, easy to go. That's exactly the vibe that we want to give off, even if it was chaos getting everything in order. So our B-cam is the R5 shooting C-Log3 externally into the Ninja in ProRes. And there was a couple times when our client said, hey, can you lens up and get a tighter frame? And we said, no problem. We can actually just zoom in and we can show you right then. It, it, it takes out so much of the time of, of switching lenses. I love having zoom lenses. I'm on the Sigma 24 to 70. This is the Sigma 70 to 200. Yeah. So the lenses match. They're both Canon cameras. Hopefully it makes it as easy as possible for the editor. And as soon as that hour long interview wraps, we reconfigure the whole room. So we're moving the sofa out here. We're bringing the key light in and the backlight. We don't need as much firepower on the key light side because the light level is dropping. Instead, what I'm gonna do is bring these lights as just room fill because that sunset ambient light level is gonna drop drastically. And I don't want the ambient light in the room to drop drastically. So that has to remain constant. That's why these lights are up as fill. And then I have that flag to block any reflections of the stands, of the lights, or light spill onto that window. So we do see his reflection. I wish I could have eliminated that, but at least there's no light stands in there. And here is the my angle for B-cam. I always, or actually any, any shot for interview, I wanna shoot kind of at a 45 degree angle on the shadow side. So you can see I'm on the shadow side, the key light is on the far side, and it's very pleasing to see. This is what I like to go with. And that is a wrap. So, man, putting all this stuff back into the box is time consuming. And that's why I was so grateful to have an assistant. I wish I could have an assistant on every single job. It would make my life a lot easier. And I think I'm going to push for that more and more. Um, one, it'll be faster for the client. We can get up and running and get out of the location um, as fast as possible. And our laptop is open. We are transferring footage directly so that the client can take it. No worrying about emailing a, or mailing a hard drive later or uploading a Dropbox. Both cameras are offloaded and he takes it with him on his flight back. And that, that's, I like that setup. I will obviously back up the footage to my own hard drive just in case something happens. Um, you always wanna have a copy for yourself, but you should be doing that at any level. It's always good to back stuff up, just make it a habit. Uh, Tristan has all his equipment on a cart, a foldable cart that's really nice actually. It, it can pack away. He has a BRZ as well. And then I have mine in two bags as always, but I'm stacking them this time. And it's funny to, to load in at the valet because we could be at a loading dock but you know when there's ferraris and lamborghinis coming in it's always funny to to see the the best production vehicle the brz pop up i have quite the schedule coming up eight days consecutive in a row three different clients three different jobs the first two days are going to be conference work where my company is not just the camera operator, but I'm gonna be the production company that is covering video for this conference. That'll be a, a new endeavor. And then moving into three days, four hours north of me in Gainesville covering an airplane getting wrapped and then straight into a plane to, up to Pennsylvania doing three days of coverage for a golf course. So I've had, um, not as busy of a schedule early in the year, so it's nice to be back to normal, traveling, working, but it requires you to be on your A-game as far as organization, client communication. Uh, you don't wanna let anything slip between the cracks because when you're out traveling, there's not much you can do if, if you forgot to edit something or, or you know who knows what. You don't wanna experience that. But for now, the shoot is done. We have a three and a half hour drive back to Orlando, it's exhausting. There we go, this is a better example of what I mean. So if I am looking this way and I have my key light over here, I don't like to shoot like this, there's no shape. 
So what you do is you bring the camera to the far side and you try to have the light spill over just right here. And now you have much more shape on the face. So if I was actually uh, lighting this, this would be much brighter. And there would be a hair light over here to separate me from the dark background. And I would probably position myself right on this third and I would look right here. And you don't want to do it too far so that you just see an outline. That's horrible. You want to be able to see a little bit here. Ideally, the nose doesn't break past this line. You want to have it like that. So, okay, that was my <clears throat> lighting tip. But um, we're done.